Code Break was commissioned by the Canada Dance Festival and co-produced with the National Arts Centre and the Banff Centre for the Arts. And as a result, there was an opportunity to do a piece that had two weeks on stage before it actually opened, which meant that I was able to do something much more technically complex than I had done in the past. And when I had a chance to work with Nico Stias, who's a wonderful video artist, we discussed the possibilities for this production and very quickly we decided that we wanted to do a duet for stage and screen so that there was a, a push and pull all the way through the creative process that I think resulted in something unlike anything I've ever seen before. It's a very strange and beautiful and odd work of art. The process creating this piece was a little different than the process I've used in the last while. This time uh, what was a little different was that we began to actually videotape the dancers doing things that were very spontaneous so they would improvise for the camera. For example I was able to reverse material to produce it in a retrograde pattern so that the dancers would be able to watch themselves dancing backwards and they could learn this and the result was that a lot of the movement looks a little bit disembodied in terms of time and space because the coordinations are not coordinations that you would ever consciously choose. One of my favorite moments in the piece is when Matthew Waldy is just standing. He's been dancing for an hour so he's very tired and you know his body is emanating heat and he's watching himself on screen doing this impossible series of jumps and flips to the floor where he doesn't even touch the floor. I think with, with Time Code Break we've worked with more collaborators than ever before um, because Nico's on board uh, doing video and uh, we have Steve Lucas doing set and lighting and Jeremy did the costumes, he's not here but he finished his work before he arrived so um, Usually by the time we get to this point, we're working with uh, Phil, in, who's the composer in the studio, and he's the one who's doing all the last minute stuff. And until we get to the theater, the lighting uh, doesn't start to occur. But because we've been in a situation where we've had lights and sound and the full theater experience for 10 days, We've been much more actively collaborating as a team and I think that's really exciting. I think intertwining dance and film is amazing. It definitely opens up um, a whole new spectrum of ideas and different things that can be used. So the fact that we get to do it um, with, you know, 12 dancers and, you know, we have this such a great team of people working on this piece that I feel like we've all had a very um, crucial part in the process. When we started to work on the piece, I think it became clear very quickly that we were making two pieces. The piece that would have its premiere on June 2nd, 2006 in Ottawa, and a piece that would then become a template for, I think, a really interesting performance experience. As the dancers come and go in the company, and as they age, you know, as their hair grows, as they change, as their features change, the digital images that we've begun with are going to stay the same. I love the idea that this piece in, you know, 10 years could be done again with maybe some members of the original cast in it who would be 10 years older, and with a variety of other dancers as well. And you just sort of have this layer of ghosts and memories and different stages of time. And then 20 years from now, it could happen. And I think that when we do the performances in Toronto this fall, two of the dancers have gone already, but we will leave some of their film, we'll leave some of their images on the screen because I think that they should always be part of it. They are part of the creation. So the audience may wonder who those people are, but I think gradually we'll just sort of build up this, this history in this kind of digital history, and I think that that will be really quite beautiful.